Hello and uh, welcome to our Q&A session uh, with uh, the editor of uh, India Currents, uh, Vandana Kumar, and uh, myself, RJ Sudha, uh, the founder and anchor of uh, Tamar Suvai on Radio Machi 1310. The purpose of uh, Tamar Suvai Radio is to provide a platform for the Tamar and to a larger extent the India Indian diaspora to connect, share, and showcase uh, social, cultural, and useful information that's of relevance to the Indian population from a like uh, from a mere brick and mortar uh, radio station. Now we have expanded worldwide to thanks uh, social media to reach a large population worldwide. Uh, week after week, time after time, this radio show has been bringing you some of the most productive tools uh, with you, for you to navigate through some of the most com complex complex problems of the community and with top-notch subject matter experts. And uh, today, there is no such exception. In today's session, we have we will be talking about the much talked about the uh, highly impactful uh, uh, California gubernatorial recall election with Vandana Kumar again, who is a publisher and CEO of the very famous India Currents magazine. A few uh, things about uh, Vandana Kumar and the magazine itself. As a new immigrant, Vandana Kumar uh, co-founded the India Currents magazine in 1987 and uh, has published an award-winning print magazine from April 1987 to 2017 December. Fully digitized today, India Currents has the largest following amongst the Indian American um, in, the, in, in the United States. Indana, Vandana has won awards for overall excellence in Greater Bay Area Journalism Awards hosted by the San Francisco Press Club over the past several years. Ms. Kumar has won Asian American Hero Award from the County of Santa Clara and the Leadership and Business Award from the California Legislature Assembly. In 2020, Vandana was nominated as an American Leadership Fellow, Class 39 American Leadership Forum. Amazing, amazing bio, amazing, wonderful having met you, Vandana. Wonderful uh, having you on board. Uh, thanks for coming to my show. Uh, welcome. Uh, how are you doing? I'm good. And thank you for that generous introduction. <laughs> so that sure. I really appreciate uh, sure. having this time to speak with your uh, listeners and your followers and um, it truly is commendable when community members like you step up to help get to engage our audiences in different ways. Absolutely. I mean, we both, I believe, are doing the same thing, but you are going through uh, India Currents magazine while I'm doing things through my radio show, but I think uh, both the parts of going in parallel except that our media is different but i'm sure we both, yeah. we both yeah. have crossed paths earlier and now again we cross paths again and i'm sure we will in the future as well absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> i want to actually say for those people who may be unfamiliar with india currents uh -huh. um who we are you yeah. know so india currents foundation is the uh -huh. first non-profit South Asian media organization in the United States. Wow. And our mission is to tell critical, relevant, and investigative stories for and about the diaspora. And actually also by the diaspora. We are rather unique in the sense that uh, we don't have a whole bunch of writers sitting in the in-house churning out these stories. Okay. We actually have community members who are sharing their points of views, they're you know, doing areas of expertise and sharing that with the community at large. Mm -hmm. Today we have a term for it, you know, it's called crowdsourcing. Oh. But honestly, we've been crowdsourcing before there was even a term for it. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, over the over three plus decades, we have served as an incubator for a new generation of storytellers. Now, you know, um, over these three decades, we have documented the history of Indian immigration to the Silicon Valley. We've built deep roots within the community, you know, with every kind of community um, sector, whether it's technology, whether it's arts, it's, you know, uh, literary arts, um, dance, music, oh, yeah. Yeah. you know, and that's been, you know, that's sort of important for all immigrants. And most you know, recently, our, most recently, you touched various aspects of COVID, which I thought was extremely, extremely useful. And you also touched 
various aspects of immigration. I mean, that everything that actually resonates with the common deshi, as, as I would call it, I mean, that was just amazing. I would not miss a single article that is published by you uh, earlier through the print mag, print media or through the digital media. And, and um, oh, I would just share you. it with viewers and listeners, wherever they are, and everybody would agree with the, the content because the the primary reason why I share it is because I'm able to relate to most of your articles. And so I'm sure all of them, my followers would be able to relate it instantly because whether it's coming to green card problems or COVID problems or uh, any kind of any bringing in a new kind of uh, uh, diabetic issues among the South Asian population or whatever. So these things are common traits that are, that are amongst, that's common between amongst Indians or even South Asians. So you talk, we, when we talk it, you talk about it and that is what it is and uh, you make it even more interesting. Well, you know, I think it's really important for us to tell our stories in our own voices, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, and that's what I mean about creating storytellers. Um, when we help community members tell their stories, be it about COVID or um, about health, particularly that affects South Asians or uh, immigration or what it means to have connections with India and uh, living here in a place far away and not be able to be with your loved ones at uh, in this year of a global pandemic. Yes, yes. What does it mean to be that? Yeah. So you and I, you know, uh, we relate to this content because it's shared experiences. Yep. We are all sharing that we have something in common. If it doesn't affect us personally, we know people who are affected by it. Yep. And, you know, I'll come back to the idea of creating storytellers and why that is so powerful. And, you know, we did a little uh, count and we realized that we had over 660 stories told last year. Oh. and uh, told by 128 different storytellers. So 128 storytellers were created last year, wow. you know, who will now go on to tell stories about our community in their own voices. Absolutely. How powerful is that? that is How wonderful. amazing is that? Wonderful. We have such wonderful talent in here mm -hmm. and we just become a conduit you know, for people, a platform where people can share these stories with the wider diaspora. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I also noticed that uh, you had brought in some high schoolers to be storytellers too, and you're, you're, uh, you're bringing up storytellers at a very young age, which is amazing, Mandana. Oh, oh, yes. This is something we started about almost 10 years ago. Huh. Um, we uh, we um, have high schoolers that come on and uh -huh. some of them work with us for a few years, some of them for several years okay. and uh, hone their writing skills. Oh, and yeah. some of them, I mean, they become such passionate voices. And um, we are so excited when one of our interns goes on to achieve success and they have, like they've gone on to work in mainstream media as columnists or reporters, or they are writing books and published books. So, you know, we play a small role in the writing journey mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's, it's, um, it's very, very gratifying. Sure. Absolutely. We've done a small um, switch in the way we approach our stories because, you know, we've become more intentional about uh, being grounded in the space that we live in. For example, we live in the Silicon Valley. And what are, we want to encourage our uh, readers, community members, writers that you know, our heritage and culture stories are very, very important for us. Mm -hmm. You know, they shape us, they shape our thought. And at the same time, we really need to find ways to get involved in civic engagement. You know, how do we get involved in the community that we live in currently? Whether it is taking part in local elections or taking part in the census or, you know, understanding what uh, climate change has to offer for us or, you know, this Stop Asian Hate campaign that's oh, going on. Yes. How is that relevant for us? Absolutely. Whether or Black Lives Matter and what is, what is it? Where is the intersection of Black and Desi? You know, yes. where is that? And every, one of, not, every one of those topics that you just mentioned 
everyone is so close to our heart and um, and each one of those topics have been discussed in your in your magazine and uh, i'm so glad you did i i don't think i don't think there's a magazine ever that talks anything about these things everything i see is about a bollywood star where they go what they dress up where they shop and things like that but yours your magazine has been consistently good churning out magazines uh, turning out articles that are so relevant so up to date talking about um, how um, the the events that are happening in the American society, maybe in the Silicon Valley society, is uh, is affecting the Deshi community in parallel, and how we need to be aware of it, and how we can adapt ourselves to it. Yeah, absolutely, and you know, which brings me to the reason we are here today, yes. which is to talk about you yeah. know the gubernatorial recall so, elections. Yeah. Yeah, let me just give an a, a overall view of that. Um, so listeners, uh, we are gathered here with uh, Vandana Kumar again to discuss some common questions regarding the California gubernatorial uh, recall election that's coming up on uh, September 14th, 2021. And uh, like common questions, FAQs, I would say, with, uh, like who are eligible, who can, how can they vote, what's the deadline, and what, what's more, more importantly, what's at stake What's at stake if you don't vote? You may just say, oh, what's going to happen if I don't vote? It's just a single vote. What happened? Like, like the presidential election. What if I don't vote? That's okay. But if you have noticed this past election, people have turned up in record numbers of voting, uh, stuff like that. So this election, you have a voice. So don't let it, don't let it pass by. And those are the things that uh, Vandana Kumar is going to be talking about. Uh, so we'll have her answer. Let's start off with, uh, with the basic question. Even more, even more, I want to ask her with a simple question on why even have an election. Even before we ask the election, I want to ask her, what does a recall mean? I go back and today, this morning, my husband and I were discussing, why do they even call it a recall? Recall in English would mean, from what my English teacher taught me, is recall is something you recall from your memory. That's something you remember, you, something was taught to you, something you did many years back, and you're trying to recall that. But that recall doesn't apply to what they're doing today. <laughs> Why? You know, that seems something uh, like a new terminology. Governmental terminology, law terminology, doesn't seem to be in sync with uh, our common man's terminology. I just thought I'll throw it out and see what Vantana's take is on that. <laughs> Well, I'm not sure how the <laughs> word uh, recall came okay. to be associated with this. Uh -huh. You know, and English um, is a funny language. There are so many uh, meanings to each word. So I suppose, I don't know the history of that, Sudha, but, you know, I'm sure going to look it up. But, you know, regarding, like, why have this election? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, you know that um, direct democracy is a big part of California's political culture. You know, since 1911, when California approved uh, recalls as part of a sweeping progressive era reform package, at least 179 attempts have been made against state of um, office holders. Interesting. Okay. And um, launching a recall in California is easier than in almost any state. Ah. And um, I also discovered that every governor since 1960 has faced at least one recall. Oh, really? And and most of them, you know, they fizzle out, but, <laughs> okay. you know, um, there have been a couple, you know, this actually being the second one. Mm. And what happens is for a recall petition um, to get on the ballot, it must be signed by enough registered voters that equals to 12% of the turnout in the last election for governor. It's very convoluted. 12% uh -huh. of the people that voted for uh, elect, uh, voted in the elections for in governor. Election. Okay. So in this case, in this time's case, uh, the recall uh, proponents needed 1.5 million signatures okay. and they were able to get that. 1.5 million signatures. Oh, 1.5 million signatures. Okay. Yeah. So there might be a new set of, uh, I would say, I'm, I'm calling them kids who have just turned 18 uh, after the previous election and who are eligible to vote. Um, so they come in a new set of uh, new set of uh, people who can uh, who are who are eligible to vote, and uh, those those people will also be uh, be voting for the selection, right? Yep. Okay. All right. So, so the number of people who are eligible to vote will also be increasing during this time. Alrighty. And uh, 
who can vote in this election and is there a deadline? I know the September 14th is a date for uh, the date for the deadline for uh, is a date when the election is uh, being held. But is there a is there a, is there a way in which who can who can vote? Is there I know it's 18 you have to be 18 years old or, uh, or older to be eligible. Is there any other criteria for this? You have to be a registered voter. So every county has certain requirements um, and people are, you know, should look up what the requirements uh, uh, each county has and make sure you go and register. Every registered voter has the right to vote, you know? Got it. And uh, as citizens of this country, this is an awesome, awesome responsibility we have. Sure. And, um, I encourage everybody, go get registered, mm -hmm. register to vote, and then vote. Uh, what happens is, you know, anyone who's registered, uh, since we're talking about this election, um, they all receive mail-in ballots. And you have the option of filling it out, signing it, dating it, and putting it into the mail at no cost. You know, it's, it is, you know, the postage is also covered. Mm -hmm. And you can do that. Or if you're one of those people that likes to go to uh, a polling place, then you can also fill out your ballot, take it there, submit it there. Okay. You can, uh, if you have not registered, okay. there's also the option that you can go to a in-person voting place location and they offer voter registration. Okay. Um, people can register there. I believe it is, and there is a term for it. Um, it's conditional. You know, they, they their registration would have to be uh, validated before mm -hmm. their vote would be accepted. Okay, so you can do the registration as well as voting at the same time. At, yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's also you know interesting for uh, people to know that. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, say you've received your ballot or you lost your ballot, you got it in the mail, oh. you can still go. You can still okay. go to an in-person voting place, okay. ask for a ballot, you know, fill it out. Um, if you need in-language support, you have the right to ask for that. This is the amazing thing that I think people don't realize mm -hmm. that you know, you have the right to vote if you are a registered voter, even if your name is not on a list, you know, when you go to a voting place and you see a names on the list, you still have the right to vote. Huh. Um, if say you filled out a, the ballot that you got in the mail and you made a mistake, you have the right to get yeah. a new ballot. Okay, interesting. And uh, now another thing is, yeah, I already told you about dropping it off at a place, but yeah. um, you also have the right to get election material in a language other than English. Very nice. Now, a lot of people don't know that, you know, okay. um, but they do have that right. And they're right. They also have the right to ask questions to election officials about election procedures. These are rights we have as registered voters, as citizens in this country. Okay. Okay. Yeah, wonderful. Wonderful. So unlike census, I'm guessing that this election, is, there is no online facility. Is that right? Yeah, no, we are not doing, um, you can't vote online. Yeah. You have to vote on paper and okay. uh, submit it by mail okay. or in person. Okay, okay. Uh, as far as the mail-in ballot is concerned, do I need to apply for it? Or uh, there is, an, uh, as you said, if I don't have it by mail, I can go in person and obtain the ballot. Is that right? But I don't have, yeah. I'm yeah. a registered voter, I'm, I'll automatically be obtaining the ballot. And if I don't get it, I can go, I can go obtain it from the station, from the election booth, whatever, yeah. right? Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. That's correct. Was there a deadline uh, by which I should obtain my uh, mail-in ballot? Well, the deadline to apply for a mail-in ballot was August 30th. Ah. But remember what I told you, that if you are already a registered voter, you'd get it anyways. I must have got it. Right. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, now um, let's come to the ballot itself. The ballot, as I see, is a single sheet and uh, a little bit more information, extra information, just to complicate you like a typical government uh, sheet. <laughs> uh, what kind of uh, information would a typical ballot sheet for this specific recall carry? So this is, you know, um, having voted in many, many elections, 
this time I realized it was really simple. Huh. There are really only two questions here. Very nice. Okay. So the first question is, do you want to recall the governor? Now you can say, yes, I want to recall the governor okay. or no, I don't want to recall the governor. If you say, no, you don't want to recall the governor, you don't need to do anything else. Okay. But if you want to, you can write in or pick somebody, you know, whose, whose name is mentioned on question two. Yeah. You don't have to. Okay. And now if you are saying, yes, I want to recall the governor, in that case, you have to suggest you know, pick from the names or write in name of somebody that you want to replace, want to replace him with. Okay. So it's, as I said, it's really simple, you know. <laughs> simple, very and, simple. Uh, you know, unlike the presidential election and all those uh, alternative uh, you no know, things, I think this is one of the simplest uh, elections that anybody can go in for, provided they understand what this recall means, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I think it's it's you know um, I do want to commend the folks that came up with it. it's a it's a very simple question. Do you yeah. want to recall? Yeah, mm, I agree. Not, and you know in California we've done we do a lot of things by direct democracy. You know we have all these propositions that uh, I'm not a big fan of propositions honestly because it requires everyone to invest a lot of time trying to understand. Mm -hmm. you know, what the issue are, what are the ramifications. But in this particular case, this was very simple. <laughs> um, on the other hand, uh, it's, been, it's been simple in one hand, but I think it also involves a lot of time. It all in involves a lot of money to run this election, isn't it? Yeah, you know, yeah. and um, a lot of people have this concern is why are we having this election? Because he's up for election next year. Oh. He's up for re-election next year. Yeah. So why do we not give time to him? But, you know, uh, this is the beauty of democracy, that uh, people's voices are can be heard. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's really important for everyone to participate. Fair enough. That's a truth of, uh, that is our essence of democracy. That's mm -hmm. very, very good. Yeah. yeah. Um, we talked about uh, in-person voting and we talked about uh, and talk about uh, mail and mail uh, 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 elections and all that. Uh, how do we know where are the locations where people can go and turn in their uh, ballots? So, um, you know, uh, the Secretary of State uh, of um, uh, California, you know, they if you go to their website, they they have for every county which your polling locations are are clearly listed on that. There okay. is a website, I can uh, drop it into the chat for you. Okay. Uh, it's called uh, www.sos.ca.gov slash elections slash polling dash place. Okay. And uh, anyone can find that, you know, okay. you can Google it, find my polling place, you'll be able to get that. Also, interestingly, once you have submitted your ballot, then you can also track, you know, ah. track my ballot oh, yeah. uh, as it goes through uh, uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, every stage. So you okay. know that your vote's gonna be counted. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, if I cannot make it to the polling station on the election day, are there any alternatives? And I think it's a redundant question, but I still need to ask. Um, you're asking what if I want to vote, but yeah. I cannot well, make it to that. Yes, exactly. oh, that. That's why you have the mm, mail, in. mail by, yeah, you know, vote by mail right. ballot. Yeah. You have that. Yeah. Now say you have recently registered and you haven't received it. You can go to your um, county um, registrar's office, pick up a ballot. You know, you can do early voting. You know, you can there fill it out there. You can drop it off there. Yeah. Um, or if you want, you can bring it home, you know, fill it out and go drop it off. There are, you know, all of these things that you can do as long as it's in the office by 8 p.m. on Saturday, September 14th, then we are good. Okay, sounds good, sounds good. Um, lastly, uh, I should say, I think we also talked about it. What's at stake if, uh, if I decide not to vote in this election? Well, I told you something, right? That elections 
uh, a democracy is uh, the will of the people. Yes. And if you choose not to vote or you think your vote is not important, you know, it's, um, you're just letting others speak for you. Somebody mm -hmm. else speaks, their voices are heard and you have to follow those, um, uh, that direction, you yeah. know? And, uh, and I've seen this quite often among immigrants, you know, where we have a tendency not to participate mm -hmm. because what happens is either we are, we have a hangover from the, our home country where perhaps um, we were disillusioned by the process or maybe we didn't take part depending on how long we've been here or say like, how does it really matter? You know, my voice really doesn't matter. What is one vote? And, um, but if so many people think like that, then, you know, it's a huge chunk of people whose voices are silenced and by themselves. Like, I feel this is such an easy thing to do, yes. you know? Yeah. Um, why are we not doing it? Exactly. I, I was sort of looking into this information, Sudha, to figure out, you know, what is, you know, what are the numbers over here? And I found out that um, there are a couple of really good sites like API Vote or API Data, uh, Karthik Ramakrishna's um, organization. And um, I found out that 4.1 million Asian Americans are registered voters in California. Oh, okay. 4.1 million Asian Americans registered. Registered voters in California. And in the last election, only 54% people voted. Oh my goodness. 54, you know? <laughs> Was that the presidential election or the government? Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh the, the last presidential elections. Um, for our you know, the community of listeners, you know, they'd be interested to know there are about 5 million South Asians in the United States, half a million here in California. And uh, we all have the power to vote and make sure that we live in a country or in a community where we all belong, where we feel that our voices are heard. And this is such a powerful tool we have. And in some ways, so simple. So why not take part? Absolutely. And um, for the folks that are, you know, there we have a lot of uh, cultural leaders. We are so blessed, honestly, in this country and in this area. We have, you know, ambassadors of our culture who are uh, sharing our heritage with the community at large. There are many things that each one of us can do, you know, to uh, find ways to build roots in the community that we live in, to participate in the civic life around us. The easiest of which is to vote, you know? It requires no effort, you know, to do especially that. When the, you, especially when the ballot paper is so simple. <laughs> <laughs> in, this, in this case, honestly, uh, so simple. But, you know, there are many, many ways in which um, folks can be, um, engaged uh, in um, and the contribute work. you don't have to do great things to the community you just have to go out and vote and have your voice heard that's about it yeah yeah and you know there are other ways i want to offer since we are talking about this to other people that you know there are many ways of civic engagement right voting is the easiest you can run for local office mm -hmm. it requires tremendous courage Yes. And I salute the people, honestly, whether they're running for school boards or water districts or um, uh, community colleges or, you know, there are so many um, uh, positions that are open to community members. I salute them. It requires so much time, effort, and it's not like they don't have other things to do. You know, Absolutely. oftentimes we say that, oh, we are so busy, you don't have the time. It's not like they have you know, all the time they, they have time to waste, but they see that that's a way for us to participate in the community that we live in. So that's one, and now everybody is not up for that, but you can volunteer for a 
for any candidate, any candidate that appeals to you. They don't have to be South Asian. They don't have to be of a particular uh, party, whoever, you know, but you're getting engaged in this process. Yeah. And um, this, is a, this is the easiest way of getting engaged. Yeah, right? yeah. And What's the go help in whatever you can. You can yeah. go table, you can go speak, you can do phone banking. Yeah. And we are seeing increase increased numbers of that. But as I told you, the number of people who voted is 54%. Mm -hmm. So we still have a long ways to go. We are making progress. But um, when we are speaking with people like you, other community leaders who are encouraging our people to, hey, you make sure, just go out and make sure your voice is counted, make sure your vote is counted. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, I think we will, you know, we will achieve, we will make we a will achieve success. Yeah, definitely. I think we definitely, I think uh, this interview will uh, make a difference for sure. We'll spread it out as much as we'll spread the word as far and wide as possible. And uh, we'll, we'll ensure that more people contribute to the, success of this election one way or the other and uh, we will make it happen for success sure success will be measured in participation absolutely you know? yes. because in particular this is not even a mid year election it is like off cycle so where is the enthusiasm among among people to participate mm -hmm. you yeah. know yeah and um, that is worrisome in any democracy i agree i agree Great. Uh, any concluding words? I think those were wonderful concluding words, Vandana. I would say, I think uh, you said it so beautifully, community engagement. Uh, and as I also said, uh, this is probably the easiest way to get engaged in, um, you know, as they call it, a by-election in India, uh, as you know, to, 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 uh, as to recall election, as they call it here. Uh, Let's see what happens and uh, we strongly encourage the listeners of uh, Tamar Suvai, listeners of this interview to go out on uh, and the election to go out and vote on September 14th on or before September 14th, cast your vote. Uh, listeners of Tamar Suvai, listeners of uh, Vandana Kumar's India, India Currents magazine and wherever we post this election uh, interview, uh, interview Please uh, follow this. Follow these instructions. Uh, go out and vote because every vote counts. Every voice counts. Go out and vote. Thank you very much, Vandana, for being here. Thank you, Sudha. Thank you to you and your listeners for. Thank you very much. Um, sharing uh, our words. Yeah. No. Thank you. Both are definitely in sync, and I agree with that. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Bye.